So you see now in green how the planning phase gets then executed during the buying process all the way up to the supplier that sends an invoice. So what gets paid is what was negotiated and what gets planned gets executed. And this is how Ariba merges the planning, buying and execution or paying phase of the process all under one tool, under one login, both for the supplier and for the buyers. So let's look at what it looks like. In this example, Peter, our security officer, needs first aid kits. He goes into the internal catalog of the company, finds what he needs, reviews the details, and adds it to his shopping basket. At this point, this is ready to be sent for approval to his manager. Let me come back here for a second. Oh, sorry, my watch is sending me a notification. I've got something on my mobile. So let's look at this. Ariba Mobile, I have the app here. I need to log in, yeah. And then what do I see? Oh yeah, I see I've got work to do. 17 things to approve. So let's look at this. I see here the list of uh, requisition. First aid kit, 5K US dollars. Uh, let's look at the details. Note that uh, the uh, original requisition uh, was made in euros, so we support currencies. So this is all fine, so I'm going to go back here and approve and give a little, uh, yeah, thanks, here. And there we are, I've done my approval. So for casual users, a lot of things can be done straight out of the mobile. It even includes the requisition and the shopping in the catalog that you saw earlier on. So this has now become a purchase order. So let's continue the demo with the supplier side. It is very handy for the supplier to find everything in one place, all his orders and even for multiple clients. On those purchase orders, all the information needed to give the delivery of the goods or the services will be found. It can even have attachments, for example. The supplier will confirm this order to provide Peter a status about the delivery. Can he deliver on time, for example? Now, back onto Peter's side in the buying system, the next step is to receive those goods. Peter accepts the quantity that was ordered he basically says, yes, I've got everything inside and it's fine, they're not broken. And by accepting them all, later when there is an invoice being created, we'll see this in a second, we'll be able to match it together. Now let's look at the supplier again, using this purchase order to create an invoice. But we'll do some checks here. If the supplier changes the quantity, for example, here he changes to 125, we won't let him do this. We're making sure that the invoice is compliant to the purchase order. And this saves you a lot of work because the invoice is pre-checked before it's even created. Only once all those errors have been corrected, can the supplier submit his invoice. So if we summarize so far, we see the requisition here. We see that there was a purchase order. We saw the supplier confirmed that he would send 100, and that's true. So Peter received also 100. And now we're going to look at the invoice. This invoice was automatically reconciled with the two processes we've just talked about. And so this triggered a payment. This information is sent to the supplier, so the supplier knows when he's going to get paid, and he doesn't pick up the phone to ask questions about it. In some regions of the world, we're seeing a supplier now. The supplier can even offer some discounts to get paid faster. This was the second phase of the process, the buying until payment, the operational procurement. Let's go back at the strategy now, the planning phase. This article we searched, that first aid kit in the catalog. Look, we're changing the quantity and the price is going to go cheaper. That's because there is contractual agreement on this article. 
if we look at that contract, there is volume discount. The more you order, the cheaper it gets. And this is the link between the contract signature and the application in procurement. Let's look at the legal process around this. Let's leave procurement and let's go into the planning phase. A contract has dates, it has teams, it has tasks, it has document, and the system orchestrates all this together. We're looking here at the contract clauses. And this is from, for example, a library or a template. And those clauses can be tracked. Are they standard? Are they not standard? Do they need to be approved? Now, most of our users prefer to work directly in Microsoft Word. So that's why we're closely integrated with Word. And the redlining that is happening here in Word, even from the supplier, will be reflected automatically inside the tool. Now, this contract came from an RFP. In this RFP, we had three different suppliers that participated and gave us offers. We see the prices here. We can find who's the cheapest, for example. It can even include qualitative data here. For example, delivery is included. And all this comes into scenario. You want one supplier, two suppliers, the best quality, the best price. Those are different things you may want to ask the system. Once you've selected your supplier, you can award and directly create the contract. This is what we did to create the contract that you saw beforehand. Now, because we have suppliers in millions on the network, it's handy to try to find them. <laughs> we have an interface for you to search the network and try to find and discover new suppliers. And those suppliers can be invited to your RFP. Let's talk about the suppliers. The suppliers, they have a profile, they have an address, a name, and this information needs to be managed. We can use the profile of the network and the supplier can have additional data. And this can be approved, managed, you can have warnings and expiry dates of documents. And all of this comes down to one single report at the end. You select one supplier and you see everything that the supplier did for you in the last year, for example. And so it's sourcing event, it's contract, it's purchase order, everything is in there in one place. Very handy for negotiation. Now, part of this reporting might be the performance of strategic supplier. Here, if you look at the little uh, table with different colors here, Landsoft technology, uh, yeah, they were quite bad in Q1. They were red at 84. And in Q2, they got a little bit better. And in Q3, they got okay. I think we're safe to renew the contract, for example. This is how you can track the KPI or the performance of the supplier. All of this comes from a master plan, a plan that was put in place at the beginning of the year to identify the categories where we want to do savings. And those categories can be tracked and followed throughout the years, throughout the process. We see here the sourcing savings per different categories, the savings that were planned, executed, negotiated, and this is how you manage your sourcing pipeline. And all of this was based on an analysis that was made of your procurement. And this was done with the help of our teams that took raw data from your ERP, enriched it, and then you had all the information needed to derive a good procurement strategy. If we summarize here from that procurement strategy, we derived a plan, we found new suppliers, had them registered, this turned into RFPs, awarded in a contract and turn over to procurement so that a guy like Peter can order first aid kits, have it approved. This becomes a purchase order that is confirmed by the supplier. Peter receives the goods so that when an invoice comes in from the supplier, it's matched and then it can be paid. All in one tool from planning, buying and paying all in Ariba under one login.